I uh, thought I'd show you a hermetic freezer today. This one is running on head control, although currently I have disabled it. So hermetic compressors, they require 100% refrigerant cooling. It's the only thing that's going to keep the windings cool. So superheat is really critical. And high discharge port temps can come from high superheat. It can also come from high head pressures. Now the problem that we've got, really, is that most of us are still using these thermostatic expansion valves. The thermostatic expansion valves, they like a couple of things. They like to have a good head of subcooled liquid, but they also like the right pressure drop because that really defines the capacity. Now, when you look at systems like this, which have very large condensers, once they're working in low ambience, they become over-efficient and they drop the head pressure closer to the ambient temperature. What that does is that actually brings the subcooling down as well. Now, the problem with that is that if we drop the head, we're going to drop the suction, so we naturally drop evaporator pressures and then we start getting much lower temperatures and we can then sometimes create problems with the flow through the valve because we're dropping the pressure at the valve and we're reducing the flow rate through the valve. And so the natural tendency to correct these things at low ambient is to put head control on it. Now, it's a real simple idea. If you're dealing with, say, a 45 degree day, you've got a 10K design condenser, that's a good one for refrigeration, seven better for a freezer, but you really don't want to go above 50, 52. Now, if you get the idea that you set it around 50, 48 degrees, you could get into all sorts of grief because that might correct the pressure drop across the valve, keep the evaporator pressure up in the low weather. But what it's actually doing is it's artificially fixing the compression ratio. So what I've got here is a couple of digital thermometers. Now this one's currently looking at the, the discharge temperature off the compressor. And this one here is just basically looking at its ambient currently. So you've got 22, 33. That's not too bad. I mean, any day of the week, a freezer, if it sort of doesn't use a, a balance port TX valve or its capacity is a bit under, what's going to happen is you might end up increasing your superheat slightly. That will reflect in the discharge port temps back here. When you're dealing with hermetics and Rotolox, putting too much discharge port heat on, it's not a good idea. But if we go down the line of um, fixing the compression ratio, basically that's going to cause a secondary problem. So the actual uh, device is here in the back, and we're currently running uh, approximately at about 28 degrees condensing. So 22, 28, there's not much in it really. It's, it's pretty good by definition, but realistically speaking, it's going to be much wider than that on a hotter day. Three to five subcooling on average, that's about where we sit. Now, if I start messing with this thing, which is what I love doing, I'll stay with you. Um, I'm going to actually uh, reduce the um, speed on the fan by the controller and what that's going to do is do some interesting things. You see it's quieting down a lot now. Get that nice little line of the compressor. Now, what's going to happen is that as soon as I do that, the head pressure is going to rise, and sure enough, I can set it to design conditions. So if I've got a 7K condenser on a 40 degree day, I can set it to 47, walk away smiling. I can even set up the uh, expansion device pretty easily too, and as a result, everything's going to work great pretty much all year round. Well, that's the theory anyway. The problem comes when we have lower ambience, and we don't receive the benefit of lower uh, condensing temperatures because we've artificially fixed them. And what ends up happening is, as you can see, we start elevating our head pressure against our ambient. Now, what that's going to do is a couple of things. Firstly, in terms of this hermetic, it's going to start increasing the discharge port temperature there constantly. And whilst they're designed to take that, it's really a lot more pressure on the Teflon seals on the rotor lock. The second thing that's going to happen is we're going to artificially fix our compression ratio because what will end up happening is the head pressure is going to be fixed, therefore our compression ratio is going to be fixed 
and we're going to be drawing basically the same amount of amperage most of the year. And that's okay, you can expect that will be good for most people, they get what they want. But the problem there is that we're not getting the benefit of lower power savings because the compressor amps are going to naturally rise as we start elevating the uh, compression ratio up. And this particular one here at the moment is, if I bring it down a little bit more, it's only gone up to about 35 condensing at the moment, it's a pretty cool day. And this is a very efficient condenser, look at the size of it. This one's designed to deal with high ambient. And these are the problems. Now if you're going to select a condenser, the first thing you want to consider is what location you're in and exactly um, how that's going to work in terms of efficiency for that location. In general, the lower climates will want to have a higher condenser TD just so that we can control that pressure drop. And then in the uh, higher ambience as we would have in very hot regions, we want to have a lower condenser TD. But in case of freezers, it doesn't matter where you put them, you want to keep it low because the poor old freezer has got to get efficiency and we won't do that if we start bringing the head up. Because not only that, we start messing with our net refrigeration effect if we start increasing the head conditions at the TX valve. Because that little end will be changed across the valve, it's going to be more dramatic and we're going to lose evaporator uh, capacity as a result. So realistically, letting these things go and leave them alone is ideal. So if you're going to start playing with head control, before you do that, think about suitably sizing your condenser correctly for the right location, for the right region. At the same time, think about would I want to use a thermostatic expansion valve, I know it's cost, uh, quotes, but at the end of the day, maybe the electronics better. Reason being is that the electronics are a little more forgiving. They can have, as long as they get a head of subcooled liquid to them, much lower head conditions because they are ported much larger than the thermostatics are, which means that they can increase their opening degree and allow more refrigerant flow at lower head pressures, solving some problems. You'll keep the evaporator pressure where you want it, but at the same time, you'll have the benefit of the lower head pressure and a much lower compression ratio, giving you lower discharge port temps and also lower amperage. It's just basically food for thought. So whilst the head control systems do have a benefit, at the end of the day, they are limited because they are only fixing one problem, but realistically they're causing some more. And that doesn't mean don't go out and buy them. If you want to buy them and use them, all good. But if you're talking about much larger economies of scale systems, head control really is a situation that we need to think about, and it's done pretty well out there anyway. But if you're in the sort of retail commercial side of things, maybe have a look at what's going on with that. And sometimes the customer gets a little bit of extra superheat on a cooler day. We go up a few K. That's a trade-off that's worth the power savings in the end because it might return more power savings versus a slight loss in the room. And let's remember, in the cooler months, the shock to the room and the conditions that the units work under are a lot happier anyway. All right, folks, have a good day.